I, I, I think I should even say that I'm surprised that uh, this one has said that six billion is being projected to manage the protests. It shows that the government, this country has money, really. Is this, <laughs> yeah, are some people seeing this as an OMB? What are they budgeting six billion for? But regarding your question, the constitution is very clear, section 39, that Nigerians have the right to freedom of expression. Section 40 guarantees the constitutional right to association and peaceful assembly. This right is not absolute, because under section 45, there are derogations to this right, for example, for the protection of public order, peace and safety, and so on. The right to assemble may be curtailed where there is violence or riot. My concern is that the government is the one that is feeling the perception that this protest is going to be violent. I'm very active on social media. I haven't seen any indication that so any person or group of persons are planning to unleash anarchy in the country. And let us even ask the question, how come that it is only when people are protesting against government or people want to carry out rallies against government that people will suddenly create this imaginary intelligence report that hoodlums, miscreants are going to unleash violence? I have also, we saw Asari Dukubo leading protests in support of Tinubu during the tribunal. Asari Dukubo, the SSS did not gather any intelligence that hoodlums would like jagged. As a matter of fact, I have also seen groups planning to hold counter rallies and protests in support of the government. The police have not said anything about it. So this impression that some people are planning to burn the country is just fiction. They keep making reference to answers, and I, I choose to characterize this as fraudulent historians. It is fraudulent history to say that the NSAS protest was a violent and anarchy. The truth of the matter is that the crisis we saw, the violence we saw during the NSAS, took place after Nigerians were killed. That was what triggered the violence. Even Kenya that they are talking about, until the police opened fire on protesters at the parliament in Kenya, the protest was entirely peaceful. So the question is, are they planning to unleash mayhem on the country? Are they planning to kill Nigerians to instigate violence? That should not be the approach. If the government is serious, if the government is serious, they should understand that people have the right to protest and stop giving us fake intelligence. The IG says he wants the name of the protesters. He wants to know the routes. He wants to know the founders. The SSS, on the other hand, says, no, we know those who are sponsoring it. So which one should we go for? This clearly shows that they are not serious. You cannot in one brief say, you know there are foreign mercenaries that are the one planning the protest. You have uncovered those behind it. At the same time, you are still asking for the identities of those who are behind the protest. Let the Inspector General of Police, let the, 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 the SSS and the army, the army, surprisingly, is issuing a statement on a protest. We are not in a military dictatorship. What is the business of the military issuing a statement on the matter? That can't even be tolerated in a democracy. Let the military remain in the barracks. The police should deploy, in line with the provisions of the Police Act, should deploy police to ensure that those who are protesting are protected. Because the court have even made pronouncement on this matter. Let us assume for a second that they actually have real intelligence, which I believe they don't have that they have real intelligence that this protest can turn to violence. The court have ruled that the police cannot stop protests because of apprehension of violence. That right. the proper way to approach it is to ensure that those who are planning the violence are protected and the protesters are also protected. So let them stop creating this apprehension, this nightmare that the country is going to burn. Nobody is planning to burn the country. People are tired, people are hungry, people are desperate for solutions. The government is not providing solutions. And why does the president have to wait till the 1st of August? He can, wait, he can start this moment, start this moment to effect the changes that people are asking for. Reduce the number of ministers, right? Cut the cost of governance. Tell Nigerians you are not going to purchase a new presidential jet with 150 billion. Tell us you have abolished the office of the first, the first lady and the office of the first daughter and the first son because we now have office of first lady, office of first son, office of first daughter. Can you imagine Fola Shade Tunubu making a statement yesterday threatening Nigerians not to protest and you are telling people that you are running a democratic country? Begin to show us that you are serious. Send a bill to the National Assembly before the, the 1st of August. Met IREF. A, a legal requirement in our election. These are things that people are asking for. You can do this thing before the 1st of August, but they are not doing that. Begin the fight against corruption. You are not fighting corruption. You are telling people not to protest. You are not changing the country. You are telling people not to protest. You are buying, you are, you are investing billions, about 22 billion, 
to build a new residence for the vice president, you are planning to build 5 billion to presidential yacht, and you are saying Nigeria should not protest. Even the Agbado that Tinubu promised Nigeria, people cannot buy anymore. You are talking about minimum wage of 70,000 that cannot buy a bag of rice. Nigerians have to protest. That cassava and Agbado that he promised us, he should provide it. Nigerians don't have what to eat. And you are telling people not to protest. All right. What is the alternative? All these fake bishops, uh, fake student leaders that they are using to tell people not to protest, people are not listening to them. People are not going to listen to them.